Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. From the Book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31. What, then, shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Come on, patriots, call in. Good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is, it, well, at least it's not raining outside this morning. Good morning. Zeb at the Ranch, and of course, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. Always at your disposal. Get on the rod service. Get rid of your garbage. 734-6969. Now, without further ado, let's get a real patriot on the air with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. What in the world? Are you hanging up the phone on these people? I, I'm having a hot streak this week. Uh, okay. Doing the pledge. <laughs> okay. Do it one more time. Thank you. Alrighty. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That a boy, Wheels. Thank you very much. And right now, it's time for the weather. Brought to you by Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. And they're offering up to up to a $1,700 rebate on qualifying new Lennox systems that can keep your home feeling perfect inside. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, 678-0459. Here's the weather. Well, as we are saddling up and uh, getting ready to go for today, today's going to be nice, so you can expect to see some sunshine. going to be a little bit on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 9 miles an hour. Expect a high of 60, tonight low of 43. Wouldn't you know, tomorrow going to be complete opposite. going to be windy out of the southwest, right around 24 miles an hour. 80% chance of rain showers for tomorrow as well. Most of the skies, high of 53, overnight low of 34. For Friday, winds calming down. Sun is going to shine, high of 57, Overnight low of 35. Partly cloudy skies and 66 for Saturday and partly cloudy and 65 for Sunday. That is your weather for Zebra Ah, uh, Thank you very much. And brought to you this hour by Ramsey Heating and Electric. And they, of course, teamed up with Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Oh, my goodness sakes. We've got a lot to cover this morning. And we've got some great guests, Dave Bego, Steve Malloy, Kelton Hatch. Uh, but I've got some things I want to remind you of. First and foremost, tomorrow will be Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant. Now, I'm going to do the commercial, and then i got some other information to give you. So stay tuned and be, write some things down, if you would, please. Uh, Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley, America's Diner. And they have got such a wide and varied menu oh all great all delicious with that new line of burgers they got and everything great breakfast oh my goodness sakes i just am going to have so much fun over there you will too great food at denny's restaurant america's diner nice people and we'll be there tomorrow for lunch bunch at 11 30 don't you miss it come on in now We are going to have a very special 
birthday party tomorrow in honor of Russell Smith's 92nd birthday. And uh, we urge you to come on in and bring cards and well wishes with you. And Deanna and I will take care of getting them shipped up to his Pocatello room at the Idaho State Veterans Home. 1957 Alvin Ricken Drive, Room 70, in Pocatello, the zip 83201. So, once again, tomorrow we will be at Denny's Restaurant for Lunch Bunch at 1130. Don't you miss it. We just talked a minute ago about Ramsey Heating and Electric, and I'll mention again for all, all of your heating, cooling, and, of course, electrical needs, it's all there. I mean, my goodness sakes, what an inventory, what a store, what a place, what a great bunch of people so friendly at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number to call is 678 They're open 730 to 5 Monday through Friday, where they provide warm winters and very cool summers at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. Really good folks. Well, we've got a lot of things to cover here. Let's start off with this. I <laughs> I couldn't help but just stare at the television set in wide-eyed amazement as to how Maxine Waters... Now, folks, I'm not making this up. You can check it out for yourself. How Maxine Waters, Democrat from California, could be such a blatant liar... And she is. Either that, or she has the mind capacity of a duck. Now, she showed, without any doubt, her lying qualities yesterday. She was on tape. I've watched the tape 13 times since yesterday. Giving a speech in Washington, D.C., and calling ever so loudly for the impeachment of Donald Trump. Let me say that again. Calling ever so loudly for the impeachment of Donald Trump. Impeach 45. Impeach 45. And goes on and on and says she would not rest until he was removed from the Oval Office. But yesterday she said she never said that. I said, what? I said, how could she do that? I watched a great big long tape with her standing up at the podium yelling impeachment. And then she looked at the cameras, and she was on various other networks yesterday, and she told them, oh, I never said that. Oh, I never said that. She is, like I said, she's either the greatest liar in the world, or she's totally inept and very stupid. What are your thoughts about this just shows what's going on in politics today. They will not stand up or be held accountable for their absolutely ridiculous, on either side of the aisle, ridiculous and absolutely absurd statements. I've seen the tape. I know many of you have too. And then I heard an excuse this morning that just drove me right (laughs) up the wall. One lady said, well, maybe she forgot. Oh, come on. Calls welcome 436-224418669274587. She is a very vile, very sinister, very non-productive part of our Congress, Maxine Waters, and absolutely the the people in California in her district should be absolutely embarrassed to have her representing them. Barry Equipment and Rental, and they're located at South Lincoln and Jerome. Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. You know they have all the equipment, all the equipment to get the job done right. All you have to do is stop in or give them a call and check out, of course, all the equipment rentals like the Bobcat excavators and the all the way up to the big Doosan loaders. I mean, man, they've got it all. And retail equipment sales, really, they can do the job for you. All you have to do is get a hold of them. Barry Equipment and Rental, South Lincoln and Jerome, 
Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. As soon as it dries up, i got to get a hold of old Juan over there at Barry Equipment and Rental. Really nice people. And another great business I want to, and I am going to have, uh, I think Nick's going to be on the program Thursday, Nick Greenwell, and we're talking about Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley. Now that I've said that long, lengthy address, told you where they are, now I'm going to give you the phone number to call and make an appointment, 678-1191, 678-1191. Why should you call them? Because they can help you. Get back to being and feeling like you. So please give them a call whether you got sore muscles, recuperating from surgery, or trying to get back after a broken arm or a leg. Hey, call them. They're great. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 678-1191. Helping you get back to being you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. In the Maxine Waters is the worst excuse of a human being that I can think of. She just, I don't know, she acts like an animal. And then the more she talks, the more ignorant she gets. And I've seen that myself, and I couldn't believe she was saying it. And now she says she's not. What a lying whatever you want to call it. Well, you know, and some of the excuses that were thrown up for her were these, and I'm just going to kind of paraphrase some of these things. Some of her fellow congressmen and women said, oh, well, she's so involved in the community and so involved in her politics that she probably forgot what speech and where she said that. Keith, you know as well as I do, that is bunk. And you know something else that I, she represents a district in California, and I'd like to know where it is because I don't want to ever go there because if these people keep electing her time after time, they must be as dumb as she is. I can't give you an honest appraisal of that because I would not want her in any way, shape, or form representing me or my family, my business, my area. Uh, she is despicable for some of the things that she has said and done over the last couple of months since the Trump ca- election uh, came into effect in January. And for her to say, well, I never said that. She told one MSNBC reporter that he was wrong and he hadn't done his homework and that she'd never said that. Keith, you saw the tape. Yes, I did. And, you know, uh, the only network that I can even begin to believe is Fox. Yeah. Now, I was listening to the morning news because I like to see the local out of Twin Falls, you know, the weather and stuff. And they said something about O'Reilly leaving Fox. Well, let's let's let me stop. No, let me stop you right now. Let me stop you right there. Uh, Bill O'Reilly has, I am going to give you the story as it was presented to me by a couple of my news sources back in New York City. Bill O'Reilly has paid a lot of money in hush-up money for some things that he has done with some ladies uh, or tried to do with some ladies that were attempting to work at and go up the corporate structure at Fox News. And quite frankly, Bill O'Reilly is in a heap of trouble. The Murdoch family is split over whether keeping him or opening the door and telling Bill O'Reilly to go. There are a couple in the Murdoch family that want to keep him, and Rupert, the head man, Rupert Murdoch, is uh, he's kind of torn between do I tell Bill O'Reilly to go or do I take orders, basically, from the New York Times. So I honestly will tell you this. I feel that this vacation, supposedly a vacation, was nothing more than to get O'Reilly off the air for a while. They wanted to see what things would simmer down to, but I will give you a guesstimation. Are you ready for this? Here's something you can write down and blame on me if I'm wrong. I am going to tell you that by the end of next week, Tucker Carlson will be moved into Bill O'Reilly's spot and time slot, 
and O'Reilly will be gone. Well, you haven't been wrong many times, my friend. So I'm going to take that to the bank. All right. Well, I wouldn't try to cash the check just yet. <laughs> you know, Mr. Carlson, I really like this guy. He's a sharp kid. He invites people on the show that are directly opposite of him, and I've never seen him uh, say goodbye to them that wasn't pleasant. Yeah. You know, this is quite a skill. Yeah, and O'Reilly... Get out of hand. O'Reilly had a tense tendency and a penchant, and let's be honest, O'Reilly is a bully, and uh, I don't care for Bill O'Reilly's style. I didn't like the way he kept interrupting. I didn't like the way that he would invite people on. I don't care if it's Krauthammer. I don't care who it was, and he'd ask a question, and then O'Reilly himself would give the answer. It's answer. It's almost like he uh, didn't want the guest to give any answering time because he wanted to be the star of the show. I did never care. Never cared for Bill O'Reilly. Well, I've, I've known for some time that you were not an O'Reilly fan, but I kept sticking with him because he seemed to not be intimidated by the left. Yeah. And that is quite an attribute, but uh, some of these other things... I'm not so sure about. Well, and the other thing I want to say is, if I'm wrong, I will be the first, and you know me well enough, I'll be the first to come out and say I'm wrong. And I honestly believe that the tumultuous activity going on right now from O'Reilly's office at Fox and the possible and potential lawsuits, some of the cover-ups, some of the payoffs and everything, I think that you're going to see the Murdoch family come out in unison and wave goodbye to Billy Boy. Yeah, and if, if you're wrong, I'm going to drive out to your house and let you tell me you're wrong. <laughs> I'll do it publicly, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> okay, Keith, thank you. Appreciate it. You All right, calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Now, I really feel that way. I think that O'Reilly's got um, too much dirt and mud on the doormat, and I think that uh, the two of the Murdochs that are in charge, I've said basically they want to see him go, and uh, Rupert has been dragging his feet. You heard that a little bit during the ABC or the CBS News, pardon me, at uh, 8 o'clock. And I think there'll be a transition there. And I also will stand by my guns that as far as putting him in the power slot and the 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 5 o'clock California Time is the power slot. And that would be a movement to put Tucker Carlson in there in place of Bill O'Reilly. I'll stand behind that as of this morning. Don't forget Ag Express. Uh, they're looking for drivers. They're looking for you. That's right. They're looking for full and part-time positions. Retired folks are welcome. They'll work around your schedule two or three days a week, whatever. And you're home every night. You're using new and maintained equipment. You've got vacation schedules, benefit programs. Wow! You better look for a job no further than Ag Express. Call Dale and Paul at 438-8886. Allen in Twin Falls, 731-2495. And Russ in Burley at 431 Ag Express is looking for drivers. They're looking for you. By the way, I just received word, and then I'll take some more of your calls. Come on, give me a jingle, 436-2244. I just received word that there is going to be an educational brain hearing and technology seminar and it's going to be at the minicasha chamber of commerce uh april 27th next week on thursday and uh the doctor of audiology christine pickup is going to be the doctor but you must must rsvp if you want to attend and lunch will be provided so please don't forget that uh it's a brain hearing and technology seminar absolutely excellent by a wonderful person Dr. Christine Pickup of uh, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids and they're located right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room. The number to call for a hearing screening 312-0957. I'll be telling you more about that as the days go along but don't forget it okay. 
All right. Calls are welcome. 436 22 four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven i'm really upset and i don't think upset covers it i'm mad because little by little day by day in the media white people are being slandered and selected for crimes and killings, and various mayhem. Yesterday, in Fresno, California, and I want to emphasize this because this is the truth, a Muslim man shot three white men in particular. There were other subjects, and I hate to use this word, available But no, he singled out three white men in particular. And he yelled, Allah Akbar. Now, what makes me so furious, and nobody is going to change my mind on this one, is that the Associated Press changed the words that this shooter had yelled when shooting this these white men. He had shouted, Allah Akbar, and the Associated Press said that the words were stated as, God is great. Now here's where I'm offended. Here's where I'm offended. Allah in no way, shape, or form, or any credence, nothing could ever be associated with our God. Our God that's a loving, sustaining, and caring God. And for the Associated Press and the liberal loons in our society, some of which work in Twin Falls, Comparing Allah Akbar and the words God is great to where they would go to a pinnacle and be meaning the same for all ideologies and religions is insane. And for them to change the words, I thought that the Associated Press was going to give actual news, factual news, and report the story as it is and as it was. But they took it upon themselves to be politically correct, which is absolutely insane, and change the words to, God is great. It's not the same at all. And some of you out there might think I'm minimizing and trivializing what happened. I'm not at all. As a matter of fact, I'm maximizing But this Muslim 39-year-old, Corey Al-Muhammad, told police afterwards that he hates all white people. And this situation is not going to go away anytime soon. (sighs) Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call, please. On Tuesdays, don't forget, at 10.06, we have the great segment. A lot of people listen to it, Dr. History, and that's brought to you by Minicasha Sales. 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport. Zach and the whole crew, hello, Zach Attack. They've got all that beautiful, absolutely phenomenal luxury vinyl planking. And, of course, all the overhead doors and the interior doors. Oh, carpet and and all the tartar farm and ranch gates and panels too man they've got they've got an inventory over there you better stop by and see them today at minicasha sales 1321 east main street in burley and they do sponsor dr history on tuesdays calls are welcome 436-2244-1866-927-4587 want to get this in quick before i forget and again Some of you may be offended, but I didn't get on this program to be buddy-buddy, cozy-cozy with everybody. Uh, Supposedly, the environmentalists are going to celebrate Earth Day on Saturday. 
Oh, you're hearing about it. I know you've heard all about Earth Day, Earth Day, Earth Day. Well, I'm not going to call it that. I didn't call it that for the last five years. I went back in my records, and I have called it Creation Day. I think God created an absolutely amazing Earth, an absolutely amazing planet, an absolutely amazing surrounding stratosphere atmosphere. And I'm not going to lower the standards of what I believe in by referring it to Earth Day. I'm going to call it Creation Day. I took a little heat over this last year. I never will forget that. And uh, they said, well, for those of us who don't believe in God, why, it should be called Earth Day. I don't care what you call it. I'm not going to give any credence to just a blob of uh, Earth dirt, clay, water, and think that it just all of a sudden came out of nowhere, I'm going to refer to it as creation day. God created the earth. And you know, some of the things that these environmentalists cling to as far as, uh, oh, we've got to do this, and we've got to stop the pollution and everything else, Rachel Carlson, pardon me, I bit my tongue twice, and the pain on a 1 to 10 scale was a 33. Rachel Carson's 1962 bestseller, Silent Spring, oh, they always revert to that and say, what a great masterpiece to help preserve the earth. Well, for First of all, let me say this, much of the book, Silent Spring, was a lie and false and absolutely made up. Okay, I broke that bubble. Rachel Carson and her book, Silent Spring, were supposedly raising the specter of the dangerous effects of pesticides on America's countrysides and denouncing this, that, and the other when in essence she had no scientific fact behind her on many, many issues in the book. Just made it up. It was, quite frankly, a bunch of balderdash. Look it up yourself. But I'm not going to refer to it and go along and get in bed with all the environmentalists, all these scraggly-haired people that absolutely worship the planet Earth, Gaia. Mother Earth, Mother Nature. It's ridiculous. I'm going to refer to it as I have. It's creation day. And I thank the good Lord for what he has made. All right, call me, 436-224-4186-927-4587. <laughs> I love making people mad. Oh, give me a jingle on the landline. And while I'm waiting for your call, I also want to remind you about some really, really nice people over at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center. And uh, Abby and the crew, uh, Amy and the crew. I don't know why I said Abby and the crew, but I meant to say Amy and the crew. So, Amy, I have corrected myself. I apologize. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert, 436-3200, the number for you to call. And I said, man, oh, man, it's such a beautiful place, beautiful location, absolutely outstanding patio in the backyard where they hold uh, barbecues and get together and they take their residents out to community events during the course of the year. Oh, it's a great place. And they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. So please give them a call and stop in. 436-3200, Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Well, come on, get on the telephone and give me a call, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Did you hear that uh, (laughs) UCLA, the University of California, Los Angeles, they have a conservative professor working there temporarily, and his job is really in jeopardy. I saw the guy on TV this morning. I heard the story yesterday. Caller, I'll be right there, I promise. He tells it like it is from both sides of his vision to the left and the right, and he may lose his job over it. Okay, I'll tell you more in a little bit. Here's our call. Good morning. Good 
morning. Yes, good morning. Um, am I the only friend in this world that you've got? No, I, no don't say it like that. I don't want, I, I've got a lot of friends, and they might be shaving. They might uh, be putting Band-Aids on after they shave. There might be all kinds of problems. Well, I just, I just want to maybe change the subject a little bit. But Monday morning, uh, my wife, Nancy, went into the hospital for same-day surgery for a corporal tunnel. And I just want to tell people out there that the care that she got there at the Cash Memorial Hospital was impeccable. Well, that's and I'm nice. I'm sick and tired of people saying, you got to go out of town to get good care. Well, you what know... What's your opinion on that? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to get in on something like that, because I'll tell you why. I do not... De- no, I'm serious. I do not denigrate any of the health care issues or systems or workplaces. I think that what happens on an individual basis garners the respect or the disrespect for a certain location. It's not up to me to sit there and say uh, all the great things about this and negativity about the other. I won't do that. If you've had a good response with your health care provider, somebody that really took good care of you, I think you should stand up and be vocal about it like you are. But don't get me in the conversation to make an opinion, because I'm not going to do that. Uh, oh, you, you're, you're, you're pretty smart, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. And, and I don't blame you for not wanting to go that way. But, you know, this is a wonderful hospital we have here, and I think the local people ought to support it more. All right, well, that's... Just treat me, because my name is Keith. They didn't treat me wonderfully. They treat everybody the same, I'm sure. Well, then, see, right there is a good opinion and basically a real testimonial. I appreciate you calling on that, Keith. Thank you, and best to Nancy. Thank you so much. (laughs) All right, sir. Thank you. Caller number two, you're on the air. Go ahead. I have something a little bit different subject, but I wonder if I missed it Monday, or did you talk about why Monday was a holiday for some of our government offices? Now, usually if the 1st or the 15th falls on a weekend, they automatically go to Monday as to be that date. Well, with the 15th falling on a Saturday, I assumed that Monday would be the day everything. But no, the taxes, everything were due on the 18th, which was a Tuesday. And mine, of course, I was dealing with county. So I called and I asked them why, because I, I thought, well, Easter Monday we've never had. Now, Canada has Easter Monday as holiday. But do you know that it was in Washington, D.C., they declared Emancipation Day? Now, that's a new one for us, isn't it? So, therefore, it was a holiday, not for everything and everyone, but it, it certainly dealt with our, our federal government as far as taxes and our county office. You know, and you bring up an excellent point this morning, and I, I'm not trying to hedge, but I hope you'll understand what I'm about to say. I picked and chose exactly the stories I had during the first hour on Monday. I had nine very prominent stories that I wanted to get on the air that I thought were very newsworthy. And some of them involved the problems with North Korea, Syria, etc. And I'm not making excuses, but I looked at that story that you're talking about, and I didn't find as much newsworthiness, if you will, that was uh, pertinent for what I wanted to do that morning. So I guess, in essence, what I'm saying is, I apologize to you if I overlooked it. Oh, no, no. I I wasn't saying that, because I totally agree with you about the importance of things. But I'm just saying, I mean, all all of a sudden, we're racist, but now it's the whites that are suffering. And now we're supposed to pay restitution and have a special day for emancipation, freeing of the slaves. What's next? What's next is this, and don't think for a minute that I'm way off in left field eating popcorn and haven't found a seat in the ball game yet. I'm telling you that it's going to come back in the not-too-distant future with people like Representative Keith Ellison from your former home state of Minnesota and others that are going to be pushing for remuneration. That is a big word. They're going to be pushing for remuneration to black families dating way back to the Revolutionary War. This is a mess. Yeah, no, please don't 
geez, I don't even tell people I'm from Minnesota anymore after what the Muslims and all are happening back there and after talking to some of my family. They're even, after being there for generations, are considering moving. So, <laughs> thank you. All right. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for your call. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I like that lady. Uh, she, uh, we've been friends for a long, long time. I've known her, and I really respect her. I want to go back quickly and take some more calls naturally to this ucla professor this guy has basically stuck his neck on the chopping block because of the ultra liberal means and methods that are happening at most colleges and universities in our great country today but especially like right there at ucla in the last two weeks ucla has canceled the speaking agreements of conservative thought on campus and uh, this gentleman this professor got up and said that that the liberals punish those that do not conform to their ideology gee it almost sounds like Islam doesn't it they punish those that do not conform to their ideology and he's expecting quite frankly, that he's going to get the axe in the next couple of days and be persona non grata at UCLA. And they they said, do you really care? And he says, no, not really. I have a very good law practice, and I'm going to continue to speak out on what's right and wrong, looking at both parties. And I really respected this man. He's going to pick and choose and say what's right and wrong, regardless of partisan politics. That's the way it should be. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. And Scott Gano, ye old sprinkler man. I'll tell you what, his crew and himself are so busy right now. I mean, they're pruning and trimming fruit trees, and they're putting in brand new sprinkler systems, and they're repairing the old ones, and they're doing landscaping. Woo! A whirlwind of activity. Scott Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service, 438-2485. That number again, 438-2485. Call them. Get on the list. Get the work done. Scott Gano Landscaping and Sprinklers. Hello, caller. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, how many of these uh, colleges that were having problems with are receiving some kind of government assistance or government grants? Uh, isn't that a form of discrimination? And isn't there a law against discrimination? Oh, come on, Tony. If you're liberal and you're Democrat, you can get away with anything. Well, it's about time we broke that balloon. It should have never been blown up in the first place. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like uh, our, our school is just going to hell. Well, I tell you what. To do anything about it. I absolutely agree with you. You know, and if I had a youngster, and caller number two, stand by. But if I had a youngster that was of college age right now, I would do anything in my power to try to dissuade them from going to one of the higher institutes of learning. I would really push them about some of the various trades that are available in this country that are begging, begging for more numbers to get involved in their uh, jobs, whether it's electricians, plumbers, whatever. Uh, I think the higher education of learning have turned into cesspools of negativity. Well, today a plumber can make a heck of a lot more uh, money than a four-year college. Oh, absolutely. Out there looking for a job. Well, that's the, and therein lies another problem. The millennials aren't really doing too good at looking. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of them are on welfare, too. Yes, they are. Hey, God bless you and Mary. Thanks. I appreciate it, Tony. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks, All man. right, buddy. Thanks. Hey, caller, I'm going to ask your patience, something that I have a hard time finding sometimes. I looked for it the other day. But I've got to get a weather forecast here. I'll be back to you in 60 seconds. Just stand by, please. Riverview Urgent Care, 382 North Overland and Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East in Twin Falls, and
Jerome Urgent Care, 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. Minor emergencies, major care. The doctor will see you now, not in four or five days. They specialize in taking care of your emergencies. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Well, as we are saddling up and uh, getting ready to go for today, today's going to be nice, so you can expect to see some sunshine. going to be a little bit on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 9 miles an hour. Expect a high of 60 tonight, low of 43. Wouldn't you know, tomorrow going to be complete opposite. going to be windy out of the southwest, right around 24 miles an hour. 80% chance of rain showers for tomorrow as well. Mostly cloudy skies, high of 53, overnight low of 34. For Friday, wind's calming down, sun is going to shine, high of 57, overnight low of 35. Partly cloudy skies and 66 for Saturday, and partly cloudy and 65 for Sunday. That is your weather for Zeta Durant. And brought to you by the Urgent Cares, Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, and Twin Falls Urgent Care, Jerome Urgent Care. Minor emergencies, major care, they're open seven days a week, serving you. I am so sorry, caller. Good morning, you're on the air. Yes, Deb, uh, I don't know if you spoke about the uh, congressional seat down in Virginia, yeah. but uh, uh, my wife came in this morning and said, well, what was the deal with that? And I said, well, there was 11 Republicans and one Democrat, and he didn't live in the district. But the, the uh, Democrats, the liberals, were hanging everything on this election because they need something, you know, to hang their hat on because it's been a rough few months. Hey, well, listen, and, listen, well, Randy. Like the Democrat, well, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I'm glad you brought it up. It was my next story. You must have ESP. Uh, it was my next story to get into about this Ossoff down in Georgia. This guy, 30 years of age and a so-called filmmaker, doesn't even live in District 6. He lives 12 miles away with his live-in girlfriend. Boy, he's a dandy. Well, the way I understand it, my wife says, well, he won. And I says, oh, but there'll be a runoff, you know. Yep, yep. And then she says, she comes back in and she says, well, no, the Republican won. And I says, well, there's no, there's no joy in Muttville today. You know, they are going to have a runoff election in June between the Republican and between this Mr. Ossoff. And Hollywood and a bunch of weirdos on the left coast, they put together over $8 million to try to push this guy through, and he still couldn't get 50% of the vote. And I am hoping, honestly, that they slap his face silly in June and run him out of politics. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's Newt Gingrich's old seat, and I don't think it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, amazing what the liberals say and do. And it's just like last night. I don't remember what program it was on, on Fox. And uh, they said, well, just because you have an opinion doesn't mean that it's fact. <laughs> but uh, some of these people like Rachel Maddow, Lawrence O'Donnell, whoever else, they, they seem to be totally delusional. But, you, again, the desperation is so high that uh, they just don't know what to do with themselves. You know, it, it is so funny. I mean, think about it. How would you, Randy Golay, feel about going to the polls and voting for a 30-year-old, wet-nosed, behind-the-ears, still very damp millennial that doesn't even live in your district? Well, you, you see, that, again, the desperation is so high that, he, you know, they're just grasping at straws. Yesterday I heard somebody say that who they intend, the, the Democrats intend to run for president in the next presidential election, if that's who they intend to run, then whoever said this, maybe Glenn Beck, I don't remember, but he said, well, Glenn, uh, Donald Trump will have an eight years of, you know, of presidential activity. You know, the Democrats right now are, they're in about six inches of water, and they're floundering looking for a life raft. Oh, yeah. They are, and, and the thing of it is, is, you know, you know, okay, well, one more quick thing. You know, the Republicans like Ryan and this tax, the health care bill, and then this tax reform. Yep. And how they're 
fiddling around. Yep. And, uh, they're off on vacation. I'm going to tell you, I'm this. You know, Ryan, he's up for election. If, you know, coming up here in a little while. You know, it's be two years. You know, will come up quick. You know, if he don't watch out, he ain't gonna, he won't get reelected. And nor should he. And nor should he. And I'll tell you this much right now. I called Crapo's office in D.C. yesterday, and I said I want him on the air next week for a longer period of time to answer and address questions from my audience. And I said I want to specifically talk about Obamacare, and I want to specifically talk about tax cuts. I want to specifically have people call and say, how come you guys aren't getting anything done? And hopefully we'll get him on the air next week. Randy, thank you. You bet. See ya. All right, buddy. Take care. Hey, don't forget, it's spring. The birds are singing and the flowers are blooming. Oh, yeah. But the weather, <laughs> it do change. Well, I'll tell you what. I know something that never changes, and that's the great service from Ramsey Heating and Electric. And they're offering up to a $1,700 rebate on qualifying new Lennox systems that can keep your home feeling perfect inside, no matter what the weather. You get a hold of Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459. All right, another call is welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call. Hey, by the way, little note for those of you that have a copy of the Times News in front of you this morning. Go to the op-ed page. And, you know, I, I know I'm critical of their mistakes, which are many. But don't you think that maybe they could have a proofreader or a group of proofreaders that would check things on a section-by-section basis and say, whoa, here's a big mistake. Well, this morning there was a very well-written letter to the editor regarding the Jubilee House in Twin Falls, and they cut it off. They just in the middle of a word. They cut it off in the middle of a word. And then the sports page. If you want to call it that. There was absolutely nothing in there. Nothing. With baseball results, major league standings. Nothing. Nothing. And they call that a news paper. Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't forget the big spring tire sale that is going on right now at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Doing the right thing matters. Always does. Always does. And all seven locations have this big spring tire sale going on right now. Oh, my, 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 my. They've got tires for all your cars, pickups, SUVs, boat trailers, horse trailers, whatever you need tires for. And now is the time to get ready for spring and summer driving, along with the very best in brake service. I brag on their brake service because it is the best, and that is the bottom line. They really know what they're doing. That phone call coming in probably is from the Times News. Anyway, I'll shut that off and tell you that the great big spring tire sale going on at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And service always reigns supreme. Absolutely. You stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. I got time for one more call. Uh, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Tomorrow, I want to emphasize... We're going to have Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, 611 North Overland in Burley. We are going to have a huge, I mean really big cake. 
that we're going to have in celebration of Russell Smith's 92nd birthday. I don't think he's going to be able to make it down from Pocatello to be with us, but I've solved that problem too. We are going to video the whole process, the whole Zeb's Lunch Bunch, and send him the entire tape. And we ask you to bring all the cards and well wishes, and we'll get him up to him, I promise. He's at the Idaho State Veterans Home, Room 70, and at 1957 Alvin Ricken Drive in Pocatello, 83201. And tomorrow, a very special day at Lunch Bunch, so you try to be there. We are going to take a little break for about six, seven minutes and sip a cup of coffee and look outside at the beautiful world, God's world, and we will be back in about seven minutes with more Zeb at the Ranch. We've got uh, Dave, Dave Bego, Steve Malloy, and Kelton Hatch coming up. Don't go away. my well we really got a lot of rain the last couple of days and made things very moist outside hopefully it's going to be better today hey zeb at the ranch i'm zeb bell brought to you by our major sponsor your magic valley les schwab tire centers all seven locations serving you with a big spring tire sale and of course some of our great advertisers like western way services from the canyons of the snake river and all across My goodness sakes, Western Way Services, always at your disposal. They are so loyal to the community and the people served. I'm telling you, get a hold of them today. Get on the route service. And uh, they'll come by and pick up your garbage. It's gone. It's out of there. Stand on the porch and wave. Goodbye, tomato soup can. And they take care of it. Absolutely, Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734 69 Six nine. Oh, let's see what else have I got. Oh, Mondays, Mondays at nine fifteen, we have that wonderful, wonderful segment by Vicky's Country Garden at one eighty five South Six Hundred West of Paul, called Gardening for Idiots. Yeah, you know, you're ahead of me. That was named after me because I'm not a very good gardener. And Vicky's Country Garden celebrating twenty years in business. All your plants, all your seed, your decorative rock and bark, everything at Vicky's Country Garden in. Paul. Be listening on Mondays at 9.15. Don't you forget that. Oh, and one other thing before we go patiently to Dave Bego, uh, I want to remind you too about Ark Animal Hospital. You know, I cannot stress enough how dangerous the parvovirus is for your dogs and your uh, uh, little puppies and everything else. Oh my goodness, it's a very highly contagious viral infection that is deadly. So please talk to them today about vaccination of your dogs, your puppies at Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street in Hayburn. The number to call is 678-1177. They do have the warm hearts for cold noses. Ark Animal Hospital, you call them today. Right now, let's go to the phone line, and we have the pride of Indianapolis, Mr. Dave Bego. Good morning. Good morning, Zeb. How you doing? I am good. What's the weather like back there today? <laughs> your, uh, your guy, Damon, asked me the same thing, and it's about uh, mid-70s today, and uh, pretty clear skies. Oh, same my. As yesterday. It's beautiful. Well, I can imagine at about 2 o'clock this afternoon, you're going to get a sore throat and head for the golf course to make it feel better, right? No, oh, no. I've, I've got a lot of going on today. So I'll be in the office most of the day. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this, Dave. First and foremost, there was so much 
chatter. And there was so much press, the Democrats were going to stage an anti-Trump vote in Georgia. This young man, Ossoff, 30 years of age, and a private filmmaker, was going to be the next presidential choice of the Democrats. If he won the runoff yesterday and had 50% of the vote, Hollywood put in, along with others, $8 million into that vote, and he didn't carry the ball across the goal line. What are your thoughts? Well, I think it's typical of the, uh, unfortunately, the Democratic Party and the far left and, uh, you know, their agenda and their tactics. And uh, it's good to see that it uh, fell apart on them and backfired. And uh, I think people in this country need to wake up to that, uh, who these people are. And, uh, you know, for America to start understanding that uh, these people want to control this country. They don't want to do the right thing for everybody. You know, let me ask you this, Dave. Would you, if you lived in District 6 down in Georgia, would you go to the polls and vote for a guy, first of all, 30-year-old millennial that wants to raise taxes and had a whole bunch of goofy liberal ideas, and he doesn't even live in the district? He lives 12 miles down the road with his live-in girlfriend. Would you vote for that guy? Well, no, and... um... Again, Zeb, this is what I say. This is their tactics. This is what they do. They don't care about the law. It's what they want and what they want to do. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, the Democratic Party, and especially the far left and the union bosses, are very, you know, very, very desperate. And uh, it's, as I've said before, it's going to get worse. And uh, we need to keep our eyes open, and we need to wake up America to what's going on. You know, what you just said this uh, moment ago, uh, I was watching the news this morning, and yesterday, of course, President Trump was in Wisconsin, and he toured the Snap-on Tools company. And all the employees were just ecstatic that he was there. And then this morning on Fox News, they had the CEO of Snap-on Tools, and this guy said, man, we've got a new feeling. We've got a feeling of vibrancy. We've got a feeling that finally somebody is going to stand up for the working man in this country. I think that this really was another good slap in the face to Democrats. What are your thoughts? Oh, I think so. And, you know, Scott Walker's done a great job up there, and... uh... You know, he brought in right to work. He's fought the unions because they've been the uh, biggest opponent up there. You know, they had the rallies against him, just like they had uh, in the streets of, uh, of um, uh, Milwaukee against him. And, uh, you know, just like the SIU did against us here in Indianapolis. And, uh, you know, he won, and he's uh, he's reduced the budget. He's You know, he's done great things for Wisconsin. And I think the uh, normal people and, and the people in the in the working class out there and the uh, you know uh, our union members understand that he's doing good things that are making their jobs uh, more secure and giving them more opportunity to grow and that trump is the same type person I, and i think we're going to see more and more of this i really do you know i gotta hand this uh, to you on a silver platter and let you serve it to the public i watched and listened with great interest to Vice President Pence in South Korea and some of the statements that he had made to the news media about the threat, the ongoing blossoming threat with North Korea. And i got to tell you something, even if we weren't friends, and even if you didn't know Mike Pence, I would tell you I was very impressed with the Vice President on the way he conducted himself. Uh, you know, that's one thing about Mike Pence is he's uh, very professional and handles himself very well. And, and I think I've told you before, um, you know, it, early in his career, he was a talk show host. And uh, so he, he's, he understands how to uh, mince his words and do things the right way. And uh, he always presents himself professionally, and I like that about him. And uh, I think he's a, um, a, a good um, a match with uh, Trump because he, he kind of, softens the edges up a little bit and does it in a way that uh, people appreciate and understand. 
Let me ask you, let's take it a step further from that last comment. Uh, I personally have been following all the news about, and Damon, we're getting a lot of feedback on the call, so ride that gain a little bit, please. Uh, I've been personally really watching this mess in North Korea with Kim Jong-un and his absolutely uh, uh, insane threats against us and the rest of the world. What are your thoughts about North Korea, and are you as worried as a lot of people that maybe he's going to come unhinged and do something drastic. Well, I think it's possible that he does, although, you know, uh, if he does, it's not because I think he has a lot of backbone. I think it's because he's more deranged. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, Trump is doing the right thing by allowing the uh, American military military to do what they think is right to uh, stop this, like they've done in Iraq and that. And um, uh, we need to continue to do that because, you know, history has taught us that um, uh, if if you stand up to the bullies and you show them that you're not going to put up with uh, uh, their nonsense, uh, they're either going to back down or you're going to beat them. And uh, we haven't done that during the Obama administration, and that's giving these people, you know, the incentive to step up and come after us. And uh, I think we're going to see people, uh, these type of people around the world, whether it's ISIS or you know, North Korea or whoever it may be, I think we're going to see them step back down, step uh, step away. I Because um, I think they realize that uh, the Trump administration is not going to put up with it. Let me ask you this, though, and I'm going to play a little devil's advocate. I agree with what you said. But I am concerned about looking at the mess in Syria. What if Assad goes? I am concerned about the Iranian connection to Syria and also the Iranian connection with Russia. I am concerned about China and the connection with North Korea. There are a lot of concerning, validated points right now that make one sit back and go, whoa, we could be on the brink of a disaster if it's not handled correctly. Well, you always have those situations, and you um, certainly would hope that uh, uh, Trump and the military would handle these things in the right way and that uh, we have uh, plans in the background to help uh, make sure that these things stay under control and that. And uh, uh, I have a lot of faith in uh, the American military, and I think Trump will handle things the right way. And, you know, I think as far as China, I think he's gotten into uh, got a relationship going with the um, premier there and i think that uh, you know he might be able to get them on his side and we might be able to get some things done in the middle east with other people on our side too so i uh, i think trump's working behind the scenes you know he's a good businessman and that's what you do you develop, you develop relationships you work with these people and they help you offset the bad things that you have to um, deal with let me ask you this question dave and you've always been a straight shooter on this program but do you like me, feel that there has been a softening on various positions and promises that Trump made during his candidacy, uh, one being on tax cuts, immediate tax cuts, another one being on tax reform, Obamacare, and building the wall. Is he, in your opinion, hedging, or what are your thoughts? I think he's reworking it behind the scenes. Uh, you know, he's learned more since he got into office. Uh, and that's one thing people running for president, uh, they say a lot of things and they don't have uh, as much detailed information as you'd like them to have. And I think he's in the background reworking these things and uh, finding ways that will make it work uh, better and be good for this country. And uh, I also think, he, again, behind the scenes, he's working, developing relationships with people on both sides of the aisle so that he can get these things done when the time really comes. And uh, I think everybody's, you know, um, too intent on getting these study things done in the first 100 days, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And it takes longer sometimes to achieve the results you want because you got to make sure you get things put in place the right way. I, for one, I'll come right out and say, I don't think the wall is feasible. If you're talking about a wall that really is a wall that's going to be an extended wall over a long, long period of miles. Uh, we've got a lot of private property issues that we have to solve. We've got a lot of the environmental mess that we're going to have to try to curtail. And you're not going to get that done in a short period of time. No, you're not, and uh, I, I really think, and, and I've already heard him hedge uh, that, 
you know, the, the wall may go away. And uh, I think he'll uh, find other ways to do it. And as I wrote in a blog a couple years ago, what I would do, and, and I think this may happen, is he'll turn it over to the American military and say, here, you control the border. Because, you know, right now, I don't know if you saw the article that came out yesterday that uh, Obama, he had a 40-mile stretch of, uh, of the border that he would not allow the Border Patrol to even go into. So that leaves 40 miles open uh, for people to come across the border illegally. And, and you know they know that. And uh, you put the American military in charge and say, it's yours. You handle it from, yeah. you know, the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean, and uh, you keep people out, and they'll do it. I agree with that. I totally and agree with that. you taking tunnels under them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Dave, it, it amazes me, honestly, how short-term or no-term the memory is for some of the Democrats, like Maxine Waters, Democrat from California. I had a copy of the tape here in my studio of where she stood up in Washington, D.C. and was ranting and raving, we've got to impeach Donald Trump. We've got to impeach 45. And she kept going on and on. And yesterday she said she never said it. What's going on here? This is exactly what they do, Zeb. I've been through all this. You know, they did the same thing to me. The SEIU would go out and throw stuff out there. Then they'd, you know, they'd be talking to a reporter or somebody. That, we never said that stuff. And we had evidence that they said it. But this is what they do. This is their tactics. Uh, they try to attack you from every angle. But on the other side, they lie and tell people, no, we're being nice, we're doing things, we care about people and all that. And, uh, you know, you've you got to remember with these people, it's very simple. Uh, it's do as I say, not as I do with them. And you've got to keep your uh, eyes and ears open all the time. You know, on a sad note this morning, and I say sad note because here was a guy that literally had the world offered to him because of his athletic ability. He was an outstanding collegiate football player, turned pro, the Patriots picked him up, and was an outstanding NFL tight end. And then everything came crashing down with murder allegations, finally went to court, and it was proven that he had shot and killed a man, and others were implicated that he had also killed them. Aaron Hernandez last night found dead in his jail cell by hanging himself. You know, this is so sad with young people today having the whole world at their feet, but they lack two words, common sense. Well, they do, Zeb, and unfortunately there's uh, a lot of people out there that have, um, you know, physical and mental problems that we don't know, and psychological problems that uh, uh, we don't know about or don't show up sometimes. And, uh, you know, we've seen it, I've seen it across the years with people I know, and uh, it, it's it's sad when it comes down to things. I mean, I know a guy here in town um, who uh, was a great basketball player. He's in the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, um, but... You know, his mind was out there in, in, in no no man's land. And, uh, you know, he just uh, walked out of his house here not too long ago and left it. And I guess uh, from what I heard this morning, it was a pit inside. Everything was in terrible uh, shape. He, he hadn't paid uh, uh, his um, uh, mortgage in a couple of years, and uh, he um, had some psychological problems and he just left the state and left everything and uh you know but if you sat down and talked to the guy he was a nice guy and uh you couldn't really see these things in him i guess unless you saw him behind the scenes it really is too bad though and i i want you to come in on this because you were an outstanding basketball player in indiana but why can't there be more, I don't know, psychological or kind of just somebody there to kind of guide them a little bit, give them advice, help them with these multi-million dollar contracts so that the leeches don't come in and take everything away? Uh, I, there just doesn't seem to be the aid and assistance there to make sure they can stay on the straight and narrow. Well, you know, and that is tough, but I think that's the point where these people have to fall back on families. and Yes, and, yes. Uh, people they know and trust um but again sometimes this stuff doesn't doesn't show up on these people um you know they're they're busy covering or masking their problems and uh they're not willing to go out and uh, 
you know, ask other people for help uh, because of ego or whatever. And um, I can see it, and I've seen it before. I've seen it in business. I've seen it in sports and other areas, and it's sad. You know, one other story I wanted to touch on this morning, and uh, it's uh, absolutely infuriating me. Maybe it doesn't bother you, but the United States Navy... I read a little bit of story this morning, is going to be rebuilding and redesigning their submarines to accommodate women on the submarines. I, for one, have, I'll come right out and say I have not been in favor of the co-mingling of the genders in uh, whether it's the military on the front lines or whether it be in submarines. And as far as redesigning and uh, rebuilding uh, our submarines and everything for accommodation, that's an expense, I think, that is exorbitant and not needed what are your thoughts on this well yeah you know it's this um whole movement by the left and the social justice and equality and all that kind of stuff that's uh, doing these things and uh you know it, it, it's sad and, and the truth is uh zeb that these people again and i say this over and over again because i really am concerned about it that they want to fundamentally bring down this country and and uh, change us into a uh, socialistic, communistic country where they can control things and do whatever they want to do. And, you know, I don't know if you know this or your audience, but uh, when you look back at Italy and na- Nazi Germany, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, fascism and uh, Marxism and that, uh, they were all started by unions. Hmm. Um, and the unions are what grew all that and grew that up and supported Hitler and Mussolini and all those people. And... Uh, they fundamentally want to change this country along with people like Soros, and uh, America needs to wake up. Absolutely. One final thought, uh, and no, it's not really going to be critical for the stature and the safety of the world, but it may be that Bill O'Reilly has smiled at his last TV camera with Fox News. What are your thoughts? It seems like that's the case, doesn't it? and it would be interesting to know what more of the details are, but uh, it looks uh, pretty ugly behind the scenes. And uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens and uh, what Bill does. All I can say is that my Cubs the last couple of days have fallen back into their old ways of losing baseball games. They've lost like four or five in a row. Uh, what are your thoughts on the baseball season so far? No, oh, it's early, Zeb. You know, it takes it takes time. It's a long season, and uh, you know they're they're still beating on their chest instead of getting back down to playing ball hard. And uh, hopefully they'll do that. And you know, my Indiana Pacers, uh, they're in deep trouble in the playoffs against the Cavaliers. And uh, you know, it's it's ugly. Uh, they come back to Indianapolis tomorrow night, so hopefully that'll give them a little bit of help. But. Uh, the way it's going, I'm concerned. You have no idea how much I have been cheering for the Pacers because I cannot stand the Cavaliers, but to no avail. It doesn't look good. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it's um, it's pretty ugly, and um, even our people around here in the office, you know, and, and we have season tickets that we've given out to people to go to the game tomorrow night and that, and uh, take, taking some customers and that. Uh, they're all depressed about what's happening and what may happen tomorrow night. Okay, well, on a lighter note, my dear friend, Dave Bego, Indianapolis, Indiana, author, great, great entrepreneur, businessman, thank you so much for being on the program again, and enjoy your weather, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Well, thank you, and uh, hope you have a good weather week. And um, by the way, we're supposed to, like I said, we're in the mid-70s, but we're supposed to go down to 59, I think, for a high on Friday and Saturday. Ooh. Coming through. All right. Well, enjoy, David. Thank you so much. God bless you, dear friend. All right. Take care. All right. Dave Bego, Indianapolis, Indiana. Got a lot of respect for that man. Absolutely. want to also mention to you that our dear friends over at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, his family, and his staff. You know... When there's the passing of a loved one, and I've said this so many times, you're probably tiring of hearing it, but it's really the truth. You don't know what to do in such a short period of time, and you just kind of run in circles. You, What's got to be done? What has to be done now? Uh, organize this? Well, please. 
Just remember this number, 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, can help you with all the arrangements. Always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Call them, 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Oh, my. And also, there is a very, very nice place over in Rupert that uh, can help serve your loved ones. And I would suggest you call them today and find out more. It's Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call, 436-3200. And they invite the public, you, to stop by anytime and visit the facility, take a tour, and check them out. And they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. Absolutely. So again, remember that number and give them a call, 436-3200. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. In just a moment, we're going to have Steve Malloy on our program, very interesting young man with the Energy and Environmental Legal Institute, and uh, so stand by for that. Uh, while I have just a moment, and I'm hedging here because I'm trying to find it, I want to remind you with spring and the birdies in the trees and the flowers blooming, don't forget that Ramsey Heating and Electric offers up to $1,700 in rebates on a qualifying new lender system that can keep your home feeling perfect perfect inside no matter what the weather is outside call them today at ramsey heating and electric 678-0459 there you go uh you know tomorrow i want to emphasize that we will be over at lunch bunch at denny's restaurant at 11 30 and our thanks go again to many of our sponsors of the door prizes smith's food king and handsome mortuary stokes oh they've done a wonderful job uh, doug martin and others thank you thank you thank you for all your support that's going to be tomorrow at denny's america's diner at 11.30, and we're going to have that big birthday party for 92-year-young Russell Smith. So don't miss that. By the way, let's ride 270 Highway 24 in Rupert, between Rupert and the world. You better get a hold of them today because you don't want to wait. If you have not got your four-wheeler serviced yet so you can go up in the hills, what are you waiting for? You better call them today at 436-4771, get it scheduled. And if you don't have any four-wheelers or any side-by-sides, they've got a showroom full of them. This is where the fun is sold. So get a hold of them today. Open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, where the fun is sold. Hello, Steve Malloy, Senior Policy uh, Fellow with the Energy and Environmental Legal Institute. Holy smokes, that's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. You mind if I just say, hey, Steve, how you doing? All right. (laughs) You know something? (laughs) Having you on the program this morning couldn't have been at a better time, and I'm going to explain why. Because we're going to talk about the exorbitant costs of green energy versus other energy sources. And just this morning in our local paper, there was a story about Idaho Power filing for a 59-cent increase because of the exorbitant costs of green energy. Steve, take it away. Well, there you go. Well, (laughs) that's a great example. So... If you're living on a fixed income or poor or otherwise, you know, strapped economically, and then you're looking at a higher electric bill, well, that's not going to be helping you out too much. And then, you know, adding uh, injury to insult or insult to injury, whichever one, um, you know, the green energy is not going to be making your environment any better. It's not going to be making you healthier. It's just more money out of your pocket for no reason. Steve, let me ask you this, and and you really uh, sent me some great information about uh, green energy poverty. But 
first of all, how did the green energy people, whether it's wind or solar, how did they twist the arms of whoever was in charge and demand, demand that uh, companies like Idaho Power here in our state have to buy that expensive energy? Yeah. Well, you know, um, as the green energy lobby has... um you know, gotten more powerful over the years. I mean, and they've been successful in wrangling more subsidies and mandates out of governments. You know, they get more money, they hire better lobbyists, they contribute more to politicians, and here you go. This is what happens. Well, yeah, that's all well and good, but is there a way to get out of this mess? I'm sorry. I, I, we had a little bit of a delay there, Steve. I, I talked over you. I apologize. Is there a way that we can get out of this forced buying this higher electricity cost? Well, I, I, you know, Congress, the, the subsidies for the wind and solar industry are scheduled to, um, you know, go away by 2020. Now, as long as they don't get renewed... You know, there's going to be a lot less money for this stuff. And if there's a lot less money, people aren't, you know, utilities are not going to be engaging in it, and ratepayers won't have to pay for it. Um, but as I said earlier, you know, the wind and solar industry, they're, you know, they, they're gaining political power. They're gaining money, which would, they, you know, contribute to politicians. And so they've been able to keep this scam going, and I'm concerned that, you know, they're going to get their subsidies extended beyond 2020. We'll have to see. Well, now, up by Boise, Idaho, up by the Capitol, and on the way to the Boise Airport on the interstate is a huge, huge, brand-new solar farm, if you will. Now, you know a lot about this stuff. I was told, and I've read some studies, that uh, those solar farms, if you will, with the reflecting light and everything else, can be possibly very dangerous for uh, jets that are coming in with communications to land and or taking off, etc. This is right on the glide path. I mean, right underneath on the glide path. How do they get away with this? Well, when, you, when you're politically correct, you can do anything, right? I mean, look, think about birds and these, and these solar farms. I mean, if a bird flies over them, they'll get fried. But, you know, if an industrial, if, if a bird, you know, gets killed at an industrial plant, um, you know, that'll cost the industrial plant maybe $50,000. But uh, wind farms and solar farms actually get permits. For birds, you know, it's okay to kill eagles and birds like that. I mean, it's it's when you're politically correct, you can do whatever you want. Well, where is the right and the wrong in this situation? And in the story that was sent to me regarding our conversation this morning, uh, you talked extensively about green energy poverty. What's the definition of that? Well, you know, the, the definition is going to be people who are made even poorer by having to pay higher fuel prices, whether it's electricity or gasoline. You know, people on fixed incomes, people who are retired or just poor, and they have to pay more to keep to heat their homes or drive their cars or just, you know, use electricity, and it just makes them poorer. It doesn't give them any, you know, commensurate benefits, and so it's just a total lose-lose for them. You know, I was reading in the story that 37 million lower-income and middle-income families take home less than $24,000 a year, and 22 million lower-income families take home less than $16,000 annually. You would think that those combined, uh, totaling 59 million lower-income families, they would be outraged and ready to take uh, on Washington, D.C. with pitchforks because of power companies like ours, Idaho Power, having to buy more expensive power. Well, you know, they're politically they're not very well organized. They probably don't even know it's happening. And if they go to complain to someone, they're going to be told, to, well, this is for your own good. This is for the health of the planet. Of course, they're not going to have the wherewithal to, you know, figure out the difference. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a real problem. Uh, you know, and this happens around the world. You know, we're right now we're trying to keep... Uh, you know, in, in the United States, it's just sort of, uh, you know, people have less money to spend. But, you know, places like India, there are 300 million uh, people without any electricity at all. And, you know, with climate hysteria going on, um, you know, U.S. Greens are trying to keep those people from getting any electricity. Okay, you mentioned it. So with cl- the, whole, the whole thing is really, it's, 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 it's misanthropic yeah. in its nature.
You mentioned climate hysteria. Now, I got to be honest with you. We're seeing a normal spring with moisture and rain and clouds and coolness, some days with sun, some days with temperatures up in the mid 60s. I don't believe in climate change. I never have. I think it's nothing more than the greenies and the liberals trying to gain a seven letter word over all the world, and that's the word called control. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Look, um, you know, the climate is not changing in any significant way. We still have the same winter, summer, spring, fall. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes it's warmer than other times. Sometimes we have more snow, less snow, more rain, less rain. It's just called weather. And the environmentalists have successfully planted the seed in people's brains that, oh, my God, this is climate change caused by humans, and it's bad. And, uh, you know, next time you hear something like that, I would just, you know, ask the person who is, you know, hysteriating about climate, well, you know, what is the right temperature? What, what should today's temperature be? And how much rain should we have? And, and you know, how much carbon dioxide is, is, should the atmosphere have? And how do you know all these things? Well, um, and you find out that they really don't know what they're talking about. They're just repeating the hysteria that they've been brainwashed with. Steve, talk a little bit about what's going on in California with Governor of La La Land, Jerry Brown. We'll take that. I'll, I'll give you the rest of that question in just a moment. We have a caller on the air with a question for you. Caller, you take precedence. Go ahead, please. Hello there. Yeah, from my understanding, I, I always thought carbon dioxide was a good thing because plants absorb carbon dioxide, they grow healthier. And so I always thought the more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the better crops and everything else will grow and the healthier they'll be. Well, for heaven's sakes, you went to the wrong school. You didn't go to the same school as Tom Steyer and Jerry Brown. Well, I just I thought through... All right, we'll have uh, Steve answer you on the air. Thank you, caller. God bless you. Thank you much. Go ahead, Steve. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I think it's great the caller actually went to school, which is a lot more than you can say for, um, you know, the, the kids that are graduating today. I mean, they, they don't know this. They think that carbon dioxide is a pollutant, that it's toxic, that it's going to destroy the planet. Uh, this is what modern, edu- quote-unquote, education has devolved into. It's terrible. Well, what about this Senate bill uh, that Jerry Brown signed, which basically is going to make by 2030 half of the state of California's electricity come from renewable sources? Talk a little bit about this, because California is so broke right now, they ought to form a country by themselves and float out into the ocean. Yeah, well, California prides itself on being the leader in green energy, and, and now Jerry Brown has prided himself in opposing President Trump and his reforms of, of uh, EPA and environmental policy. Yeah, and so he's going to make Californians pay even more for electricity by mandating solar, wind, and, uh, you know, they're, they're lucky they, that their permanent drought is over now, so, you know, maybe they can get some hydropower back. But... Um, you know, when the subsidies run out for wind and solar, and these people and ratepayers are going to be paying higher costs for them, uh, they're they're really going to be hurting unless the economy gets moving. Steve, what are your thoughts? And you're closer to this than I would be on a day to day basis. But what are your thoughts about the Trump family? I know that uh, his daughter, son in law, and other members of the family they tend to be a little bit more liberal, quite a bit more liberal in the acceptance of climate change, more so than what Trump was during his candidacy. What are your thoughts as to what might happen here? Well, that's a good question. And, you know, this is a bone of contention now in Washington, D.C., what's going to happen to the uh, Paris Climate Treaty. You know, President Trump promised to pull us out of the Paris Climate Treaty. And then there's also this other issue of the uh, EPA's greenhouse gas endangerment finding. That's the finding that the EPA, when EPA determined that carbon dioxide was a threat to public welfare, health and welfare. And uh, so people like me, we want to get out of the Paris Treaty, and we want EPA to get rid of its endangerment finding because CO2 is necessary for life. And uh, that's um, what President Trump ran on. Um, you know, getting out of the Paris Treaty was an explicit campaign promise made many times. And, uh, but unfortunately, it seems like there are some members of his family, Ivanka and Jared, at least those are the media reports, and they oppose getting out of Paris. 
Now, you know, I've been doing, I've been working on environmental issues for a long time. Um, I've never, you know, until uh, Donald Trump became president, I had no idea that uh, Ivanka and Jared actually had opinions on the environment or climate. And now I, now I see that, according to media reports, that they're actually influencing decisions. And, uh, well, I mean, that that's... That's pretty controversial, to say the least. Absolutely. You know, let me ask you this. A lot of the problems that we have today with the misconceptions of energy and the misconceptions and the outright blatant lies on climate change, global warming, if you will, whatever, stem from our education system and the greenies that are involved in the classroom, in the elementary, high school, and the collegiate ranks. How in the world are we ever going to right that ship so that they start teaching and preaching really honest, hardcore facts? Well, I mean, that's a great question. And, you know, um, conservatives and just normal people have allowed the school system, have allowed the left to basically capture the school system, as, as we have with most other institutions. The left has captured them, and most tragically, in the school system now. And so these kids are... Um, when it comes to issues like the environment and history, I mean, they just get propagandized. They don't really learn any facts or science or anything like that. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be difficult to recapture the system because, you know, we, we kind of do this. You know, most of us, we, we have our jobs to go to. We're trying to contribute to the economy, um, trying to make America a better place, trying to provide for our families. And so, you know, we don't really have much time for this kind of activity. I mean, we go, you know, PTA meetings in the evening. Um, in contrast, the Greens, this is what they do as a full-time profession. I mean, they work on this 24-7, you know, every day, every week. They are in there trying to effect the change they want. And, you know, we've got to figure out a way to combat that. Now, I was hoping that, you know, President Trump would be, you know, uh, uh, a, a great, great advancement um, towards that end, you know, because he's he wants to fight political correctness. That's one of the major reasons for voting for Donald Trump. Um, but I think the rest of us are going to have to figure out a way to fight back and retake the institutions, especially the schools. You know, one of the issues, and I've only got a couple of minutes left here, Steve, but one of the issues I'm very concerned about is agriculture. And agriculture needs energy. They need low-cost energy so that we can still maintain our number one ranking and growing the most uh, and the most prestigious food and the most economical food anywhere in the planet. And when I look at the state of California with that San Joaquin Valley, and I look up here to our Magic Valley in Idaho, the hub of some of the most great agricultural programs in the world, energy could make or break both those areas and put us in a third world status to where we have to import more of our food. Yeah, no, agriculture is hugely important. I, I can't think of a more important industry to America. It is probably our largest industry. And that, that said, I mean, it is a very sort of, you know, chancy business and marginal costs do matter. And unfortunately, too much agricultural and energy policy is coming out of pointy-headed bureaucrats in Washington that really don't understand uh, what they're doing. And they're being driven by green activists who do understand what they're doing. And, and, and uh, you know, the destruction of American industry is, is what they're after and, 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 and the control of American industry. And so once again, I mean, this is, you know, another example of where, you know, people can have to think a lot harder about what's going on in Washington, D.C., and what's happening in their local governments, and, and push back. You can't just, you know, rely on, on lobbyists and industry trade associations. Um, people, individuals, have to get more involved. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. i got to take a deep breath of fresh air. And we have just enjoyed a visit with the Senior Policy Fellow from the Energy and Environment Legislative Institute, Steve Malloy. How's that? It works for me. <laughs> God bless you. Come back soon. Thank you. Thanks, Zeb. All right, bye -bye. All right. Thank you much. Very interesting man, and I appreciate him. Uh, did I say Environment Legal Institute? No, I said legislator, and i got to correct that. I hope he's still on the line and can hear that. Legal Institute. I knew I would say it wrong. Uh, we got to get a weather forecast on here, and the weather is...
Well, it's not brought to you by anybody until I find the papers. Here we go. Brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Yes, they've got two locations serving you in Burley and Rupert. And yes, they specialize in helping people in agriculture, manufacturing, food production, construction, and people that are starting a business, a partnership, or a corporation. They are the best. Tax return preparation, tax planning, retirement planning. All you need to do is get a hold of them today. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPAs serving you. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Well, as we are saddling up and uh, getting ready to go for today, today's going to be nice, so you can expect to see some sunshine. Going to be a little bit on the breezy side. Winds out of the west right around 9 miles an hour. Expect a high of 60 tonight, low of 43. Wouldn't you know, tomorrow going to be complete opposite going to be windy out of the southwest right around 24 miles an hour 80 percent chance of rain showers for tomorrow as well most of the skies high of 53 overnight low of 34 for friday winds calming down sun is going to shine high of 57 overnight low of 35 partly cloudy skies and 66 for saturday and partly cloudy and 65 for sunday that is your weather for seventh round thank you gina brought to everybody by phillips oaks goodwin crane and company cpas the professionals that have been serving the minicash area for well over 50 years be sure and get a hold of them today they're located at 1710 overland avenue in burley and 625th street in rupert thank you very much Oh my, got some time for some calls. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a jingle on the landline. And uh, really like to visit with you about any subject that you would like to talk about for the remainder of this half hour. So give me a jingle and we'll talk about it. While I'm waiting for your call, i got to tell you a little story here in a minute about something I'd like to try and uh, get a hold of in just a few minutes so stay tuned uh, i want to remind you about cameron and siemens insurance highway 24 in rupert and they can help you with all your life insurance health insurance retirement planning employee benefits wow they are the pros they really know how to serve you and they're very dedicated and responsive and accessible to your needs. All you need to do is call and make an appointment at 436-4424. 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. I was looking through the USA Today yesterday, and uh, I came across a little story about miniature therapy horses. And I thought that was one of the cutest stories I'd ever read in a long, long time. And uh, I understand that they, there is a farm in uh, Ohio called the Seven Oaks Farm. And they raise these miniature horses. And they put little diapers on them. And they uh, take them to hospitals. And they take them to veterans' homes, and they take them to daycare centers, and they take them to senior citizen centers, and the response has been absolutely enormous to where the people that are having uh, need caretaking, et cetera, they see these miniature horses come in there, and they, they let them loose in the room with them to sit there and pet them and play with them. Wow. What a great, great story and absolutely positive effects. One of the quotes was that uh, there's a whole body of research literature on the effects of therapy animals that does show there are positive effects. It absolutely helps uh, lower blood pressure and stress levels, and they said the people just can't wait for these little miniature horses, probably stand less than three feet tall, to come in and visit them maybe once a month. That's nice. I like good stories like that. All right, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. And I also want to remind you about our friends at Ag Express. They are looking for drivers 
They are looking for you. That's right. And all you need to do is just give them a call. Now, they're looking for full and part-time positions to be filled, and uh, retired folks are welcome to come over and apply. And they'll work around your schedule two or three days a week, whatever works best for you. And you're home every night. My goodness sakes, and you're working on new and maintained equipment, vacation schedules, benefit programs. Woo-hoo, yeah, good ones. And here's the numbers. Call Dale and Paul at 438-8886, Allen and Twin Falls at 731-2495, and Russ and Burley at 431-7175. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Ag Express is looking for you. And the door just opened up, and into my home has uh, finally arrived the incredible bulk of and he's walking down my hallway to the point where my boards in the floor are starting to creak. Yeah. Well, Kelton Hatch, I'm even going to turn the mic on and let you say kind of an informal good morning. How are you? I'm just glad to be here, Zach. No, you're not. <laughs> What's going on it's in just, your it's world? It's always great just to see your shining face. What have you got hanging around your neck? Those are my earphones so I can block you out. Oh really? No, <laughs> no it's well, a, how nice! It's it's, it's it, nice that we're celebrating the last day the fishing game will be on my program. No, it's just a way to listen to your uh, phone. And really, you're going high tech on us. High tech redneck. High tech Mayberry, redneck. Mayberry meets Star Trek. There you go, Otis and the crew. There you go. All right, what's been going on in your world besides fishing game? Um, that's pretty much it right now. Really, we're, we're going like crazy. Kids playing baseball. Nope. Uh, track. Track. You got a young one playing. Running fast. Throwing. Throwing. Shot put discus? Yep. Okay. That You don't throw a shot put. You put. You put. A shot put. Well. Yeah. You throw a discus. He throws a discus yeah. and then put. put There's a big puts. difference. And you don't stand in front of either one of them. No, you don't. No. Nor a javelin. Our dogs have found that out. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> he practices out in the barley field. So. Oh, my. Uh, well, anyway, I see you're taking things apart at your place. Yeah, trying to get things, you know, just spring cleaning. Yeah, are you burning more trees? I'm trying to. I see. You did I, a good job that one it's, year. It's free, free tree removal. Yeah. Just kind of give me a holler. The I got golf course was in jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> People were jumping in Rock Creek. <laughs> We're going to take a little break right now, and we're going to visit with the incredible bulk about what's coming up on the Idaho Fish and Game Report. He's trying to get his earbuds situated so they don't fall down into his shirt pocket. And uh, we invite you to stay tuned. We'll be back in about seven minutes after we listen to a little music from Old Wheels and the crew. And don't forget, tomorrow lunch bunch at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 1130. It's a special one. Don't miss it. We'll see you there at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. Right now, back over to our studios. We'll be back in a little bit. Oh, they're playing the music, and when Wheels does that, he expects me to pick up my microphone and turn it on and say, Good morning, and welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch on a Wednesday, brought to you by our major sponsor, Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a big spring tire sale. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Oh, my goodness, Uh, the rose petals have been uh, thrown and strewn on the carpet to welcome him back for his monthly engagement here, representing the Idaho Fishing Game. Here's Kelton. It's about time he's nice. It ain't going to (laughs) last. So, so, but no. Nope. Nice to see the sun out. Oh, man. You know, really, yeah, I know we've had a lot of snow, rain. Yeah, some snow. We had snow the other day, as a matter of fact, right here. But really, it's springtime, but boy, that old grass and everything's really growing. What's it like up in the hills? It's green, green, green. Really? Uh, There's still quite a bit of snow up there. There's more snow up there than you'd figure, but... um, because it's it's so summer like down here, but we've got a lot of runoff still to come. What are the road situations like? Crap. 
Okay, that it, sums it, it just, up. You know, in about I mean, so be not, careful and don't well, go up even there. Even on these lower BLM roads, it's yeah. amazing to me how many people are up running around. But I mean, uh, I mean, there's just tons and they tons tear of, them up so bad. Well, it's just uh, you know, the other day down at uh, Indian Springs, there was 24 vehicles down there with trailers on them, and there's mm-hmm. not a lot of country. To, and you know, I'm glad people are getting out and stuff. But there's there's a lot of folks out running around right now. What about the wildlife? What's it doing? Uh, Habitating? Getting fat. Really? Well, you got all this nice green up, and you yeah. know, we're. Oh, we're I'll the, bet you this grass is just. The fawns and everything are doing good. Well, the, yeah, last you bet. Um, does are getting in good shape, getting ready to have fawn here at the end of May, 1st of June. Yeah. And uh, the elk, I, everything looks good right now. Have you, you know? seen a lot of moose up there this year? You know, I, I haven't. Uh, when we were flying, we saw quite a few. Did you? I think they saw uh, 11 or 21 in one canyon. You know, some I uh, I can't remember. I know that's a huge gap on the number, but it was a double-digit number of moose they saw so in one canyon. If you were to say, being that this is the April program for the Idaho Fishing Game, all is well in wildlife land, uh, is all well? You know, I think things are looking really good. Really? Yep. As compared to? Every year. You know, I mean, it's it's just, you know, we've had just, the winter survival down south is just unbelievable to me. I mean, we had a pretty tough winter, and in some of our other areas, we uh, struggled with uh, some fawn survival, you know, up north over in eastern Idaho. How is it up north right now? I mean, are they still suffering with a lot of runoff? Oh, yeah. It'll be running off until July. Wow. You know, I mean, there's a lot of wow. snow up north. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we, we've got a lot of runoff. This it, it, we're, We should have water. I mean, magic has been spilling for three weeks now, I right, think it is. Right. And they've got a long time to get going. All the canal systems are stuck, chuck full. I mean, if you haven't been down to Shoshone Falls. Oh, yes. I mean, I, it, we feels went. Like, it feels like everybody in the world is driving here to go see Shoshone Falls yeah, right really. now. Because it's like, um, you, sometimes you can have up to an hour wait to get down in the canyon we, on a Sunday. We, we went after church on a Sunday morning here about two weeks ago. And wow, a lot of people. <laughs> There's a lot of water down there too. Oh, there is. It's My. just. Time. I mean, you just look down here, um, uh, Cauldron Land, yeah. all of that yeah. part of that creek, all this stuff through Murtaugh. Yeah, man, that is just scouring the sides. I haven't seen water that deep for. Ever. And it wasn't that long ago that I literally walked across the river on my crutches. <laughs> yeah, well, well yeah, really. You're so holy. Yeah. No. <laughs> Bless you, my son. Uh, what's this once in a lifetime application? What does that mean? Dear, I mean, uh, bighorn sheep, mountain goat, moose applications are right now. Oh, really? We've changed them from trophy species because all animals are trophies to once in a lifetime applications. I see. We're trying to confuse you. Now you did well. Well, good. Okay. And so, but application period right now is for that. Just uh, uh, you got till the end of the month. Just to remind folks, if you apply for moose, sheep, or goat, you cannot apply for deer, elk, or antelope. Say that again. So, if I p- apply for moose, sheep, or goat. That's the only application I can put in this year. For. Oh, okay. If I put in for them, I can't put in for deer, elk, or antelope. So you can't hit a double? Nope. Okay. Nope. And it keeps the drawing odds better. The other thing, I mean, to, to explain it fully, if I put in for moose, sheep, or goat, I can't put in for any general or any regular controlled hunt other than unlimited hunts. Yeah, because you could end up uh, really could, carrying two footballs. Well, you could, yeah. but the biggest reason we have it is just to increase drawing odds, because yeah. typically if people if people put in for moose, sheep, and goat, they are fairly avid hunters, yeah. and so they'll probably put in for deer, elk, and antelope if they could, but it... It, it we're just it's just one of those littler things that we do to try to keep drawing odds a little bit better. Now, uh, once in a lifetime application, do we need to cover anything more on that as not, far as dates really, or anything? Not really. It's just to the end of the month. Um, you do have to pay for the f- if you apply. It's about one hundred eighty-five bucks Ooh. to apply. Well, it, you're paying for your tag up front. That's and that also helps reduce uh, applications to a point. I see. Um, but um, so. If you don't draw, you get everything back except your application fee. Okay. And so, and that's six or seven bucks. And so, you get most of that money. I get my check back every year. It's my savings account. There you I go. I apply, don't get it, and then. 
come you know June, I get me a little check in the mail so I can go take my wife out to dinner. Or something. Seven bucks. No. You know what I like about yours? You're a big spender. <laughs> well, no, I get the hundred and sixty. I see. I see. I see. I only spend a little. Yeah, I, I could get by on seven bucks okay. for supper though. <laughs> Mickey D's. There we go. Big game regulations are out. Everybody's been calling and asking and asking and asking. The big game proclamations are out, um, and so. Some of the biggest changes you're going to see this year, Zeb, is um, eastern Idaho got hit fairly hard with the winter, like I said yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, had a lot of, of uh, fawn mortality over there. They've dropped all their youth, either sex hunts on their in their general hunts. So prior to this, a lot of people know if you were out deer hunting and you were below the age of 18, you could shoot a, de- a doe or a buck in a lot of our general units. Not all of them, but most of them. But because Eastern Idaho dropped that, we're dropping it in Unit 56 because that bordered right up against them. Um, and then we dropped it in 48 and 49 also. The only unit that will have uh, youth will be able to hunt uh, either sex on a general tag in the Magic Valley region is out here in the desert in um, 46 and 43. Oh, really? Those are general hunts. We, okay. we will still have the controlled doe hunts uh, or antlerless hunts in 54 and 55 for the youth. We'll still have those controlled ones, but uh, you, we had a lot of general hunts that allowed it um, before. And so, and then we've also added um, a ton of elk tags, you know, especially down here, down um, over in 46. 47, 41 on this side of the Bruno, on the other side of the Bruno, in that part of 41 over by Duck Valley and um, all of that country, and then also some up in 49 and 50. Is it because of the depredation? It's partly because of depredation, but we've got really good numbers of elk right now. Really? Even though we had a rough Why not up here in 54 and 55, uh, the way they've been coming down into the... Well, I'm trying to remember how we did. There may have been a small increase on cow hunts up there, but we've really had a rough time capturing the number of elk in that unit because they're so transitional and moving. You know, uh, some of our estimates are around 500 elk that actually are in that area. For up here? Very, yeah, for very much of a length of time. I mean, because we'll have a, a pile of them up here in dry You creek. say they'll move, but where do they migrate to? Back to Nevada and Utah. Really? Yeah, I see. you bet. We, they've got, they're the they're the wanderers. I mean, you may have them over on Deadline Ridge one day, and, I mean, we keep, do keep them over in some of that, you know, and wine And stopping at a 7-Eleven in Logan, right? Yeah, well, maybe not quite that far. But they'll be down at uh, Barton's Club 90, 93, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah. Is that where the Elks have their meeting? <laughs> they have, The Elks have their meeting down there. <laughs> okay. Hey, what about hunter education classes? You know, right now, if you're wanting to get someone, I mean, applications for deer, elk, and antelope will be starting next month. Um if you're wanting to be part of that, it's time to get whoever's going to put in for that if they haven't taken Hunter Ed to get it done. And we've got a pile of classes going on this week. We've got a bunch more coming online. But you really need to start in earnest trying to find a class right now. What always happens is about this time, people start panicking. We, we have classes year-round, but they've got a child that turned 10, and they can apply for deer, elk, or antelope and they haven't taken the class. And so, um, but we'll be doing a lot of online classes. Um, We're going to try to get people classes, but check that Fish and Game website every day. I had a call last week, and I almost forgot to mention this to you. It came in after the program a week ago Monday, and this gentleman, very sincere, and he said, now I am new to the Magic Valley and new to Idaho, moved here from back in Missouri. And he said, is it mandatory for me, and he told me he was uh, 57 years old, to go get a hunter education course before he could get his license? He doesn't need a hunter education course. Wouldn't it be good, though, if everybody did? Well, it's always the more more education a person has, the safer they typically are. And so, but old fogies like you and I, we don't need it. I'm older fogies. (laughs) (laughs) No, but really, we don't have to have it. But no, I always recommend that if a parent or a grandparent has got a child or a grandchild that's going through Hunter Ed, sign up for it with them. They can do that? Oh, you bet. You know, and it's it's not an issue for the teacher because... um, 
And so, yeah, just sign up and take the class with your, your kid. That way, I mean, there is some states right now that it's mandatory that you have hunter's ed in. Mandatory regardless of your age. And so um, our, our, if you decide to go hunt some other states around us, you have to have that card. And so now, I think my home state of Wisconsin went to that. Am I wrong? Um, I wouldn't know for sure okay. on Wisconsin. Is, okay. But, um, you know, there is some some of the states that is, is near to us that you have to have that. And so, yeah, you might as well just sign up, get it, set through the class, listen to it. Um, it it's a great class if you're doing it online. Sit down with your kid and study it online and then take the test yourself and let them take the test. One of the problems with the online class uh, that we have every once in a while is because it's online at home and sometimes a parent or grandparent will over uh, help or cue the child or girlfriend on the test. I see. And then they come in for our field day, and they have to take another test by themselves. Right. Without anybody there. Without anybody there to help them. And so um, if you're doing the online portion of that, um, make sure the student that you're working with has a good grasp of what's going on because they're going to be retested on it okay. once they come in and hear a little bit more of the laws and regulations for the state of Idaho, and then, then we'll give them our 50-question test. You seem like you're withdrawn today. You seem like you're quieter. You seem like your personality is backed into a cave someplace. What is the matter with you? I'm tired. Oh, well, then somebody call poor <laughs> Kelton and wake him up, would you please? Tired? You're not getting any sleep in the evening? What's What's the matter with you? You know, I don't I don't know. I think it's just you get going this time of year, it's just like Yeah. I mean it's just Well, long I don't days. like daylight saving time. Well, I hate it. It just it kills me and I'd rather it just stay Arizona's Bingo. Arizona's got it figured Bingo, out. I'm sorry. Bingo. So does Indiana, I think. Indiana. Yeah. You know, it's like why why I mean it, it but we go to, we have to get up at about quarter to four in the morning. Mm-hmm. And that means going to bed if you're going to get any sleep around nine o'clock at night. And it's pretty hard with looking outside and the sun shining. You know what I mean? I never did care for that. Uh, trapper education becomes mandatory, so you just can't go out and set the traps and play like Jeremiah Johnson. You got to know what's going on. You do. We uh, the legislature passed that bill this year. Uh, the mandatory if you purchased. A trapping license before 2011, July 1st of 2011, you don't have to have the mandatory trapper ed. Okay. You don't have to have it. But if you uh, if you purchased it after that, you have to. We had a real influx of trappers when we uh, started wolf trapping. Okay. We got a lot of trappers. We almost tripled in the number of trapping licenses there for a lot of years was only selling six five to six hundred on average now we're over two thousand and when uh, really and when wow. and when bobcat prices are high we get more than that because of the influx of trappers and we've got a lot of new trappers that didn't have a mentor and things like that to learn from um we've actually had a couple well several dog not several but a few dogs that were killed poor placement of traps using you know body grip or conibear type traps in uh, residential areas, oh. and and I mean they're they're not forgiving. A foothold, and people freak out about these footholds and and snares and stuff. But we've been uh, I've got a friend that he's had his dogs caught in them two or three times in footholds. You know, it typically trappers their goal is is to trap and hold an animal to be able to harvest the fur they don't want to break the bones in the foot and the leg because if they do then they'll twist off and get away and you won't have anything in your trap so they'll have laminated jaws or have a which is a bar of metal that keeps it from so the the mechanics of the trap has changed a lot it has and so it's built just to hold the animal there um and so if your dog gets caught in one of these it won't hurt them yeah, ninety nine point. Them. It'll hold them. Um, snares have never really been a concern with my my cow dogs or bird dogs because they're all loose leash broke. Yeah, and so when they get caught in a snare, as long as they don't hit it going too fast, typically, um, I mean, it, it'll hold them and they won't fight it and it won't. But yeah, but when you said they're putting them in residential well, areas, that, that's this, the this pro- is insane. Well, that is, and that's why we the the that's one of the main things that brought this class to light. We are starting classes. We just had one out here in Murtaugh. Had a pretty good turnout out here. Uh, could have had a lot more people in it. We only had, uh, I mean, we had 15, 
15 students, but we've got quite a few trappers in the Magic Valley. Um, so if you're wanting to trap and uh, you purchased your first trapping license after 2011, or if you're interested in getting trapping, or if you haven't trapped for a lot of years and you're thinking about getting in it, sign up for this class. It's eight bucks. I mean, oh it's, it's, it's like it's basically free. Um, it gives you the materials you need. Um, typically, um, the way the class runs is we have an evening on Friday night, and then it's till like three on Saturday, and so. It's 10 to 12 hours of classroom room time. What are the basics, basically, that they go into to teach people how to trap? Well, one thing, I mean, this last time, the reason we headed out here in Murtaugh is we went set traps. Oh, really? And, over uh, by the lake? Over by the lake. And um, uh, we set the traps. We talk about positioning and, and how to target. One of the problems, we don't, want, we don't like bycatch. And bycatch is catching non-targeted animals that you weren't trying to catch. When I set a foothold trap, I can set it for a raccoon, or I can set it for a mink, or I can set it for, uh, you know, muskrats and things like this, and and make it so that 99.9% of the time, that's the animal it's going to catch. Right, right. Um, and so we try to go through all of that with people. Then we go through uh, pelt uh, pro, uh uh, taking care of it, skinning and cleaning right. and preparing it for the market. Is there a market through. for these furs today? You know, it's very, uh, fl- f- it fluctuates a lot. One year, bobcats will be worth $2,000, and the next year they'll be worth, you know, $100, 150 $200. Who establishes that price? Um, you know, it's just demand. I, I mean, see. it's, you know, if uh, the Asian. Ca- is, if like Japan or China and Russia are doing really well, fur prices go up. Mm-hmm. If you see roughness in their economy like it's going on right now, fur prices are way down. And so it's really an international market that drives it. But, you know, a lot of people, it's just another way to extend their amount of time in the outdoors. Um, my son, he doesn't do it as much as he used to, but he used to trap quite a bit. And it was just he enjoyed being out, but he did a lot of uh, trapping for uh Farmers that were having issues with uh, beavers in irrigation systems oh, really? and things like that for uh, problem problem yeah. animal removal yeah. and so you know there's a lot. It, what about the safety issues to the trapper himself? You know there, the things have changed. We do have a lot more things like tularemia, which yeah. is rabbit fever yeah. they call it, and and other diseases. We talk about that uh, being wearing gloves when you're uh, processing. Uh, animals and things like that a lot of them are blood bloodborne diseases i mean it's not that common but it can happen and can so happen. We, we go through all of that and the biggest thing we we talk about is the laws and the ethics how to be a good steward of the land and be a good neighbor at the same time because the goal of you know you don't want to trapping is a useful tool when done correctly and it's another tool in our toolbox for management of wildlife, which we have to have. And the more people move into Idaho, the more trapping thing. Some a lot of times, there's more trapping going on with the more people you have. Like in downtown Twin Falls, when yeah. you get beavers that move into Rock Creek and start yep. taking down people's houses or or stopping uh, the stream and backing it up and flooding houses. And so you'll have that, and you have just lots of different types of uh, management that you have to do with trapping. Is it still criticized as bad as it was three, four years ago? Oh, probably as bad, if not worse. And that's really? another reason that we really, we really want to get in there and work with people because they need to be good neighbors. It can, you just can't go out there and say, I don't care. It's my God-given right to do this. Yeah. I mean, you can, but it, it's it, it ends up not being good for the the activity of trapping. It doesn't end up being good for your neighbors. I mean, Absolutely. you just you just need to be a good neighbor Absolutely. when you're doing that type Absolutely. of stuff. Uh, calls are welcome, and please do call, because Kelton feels so lonely when he doesn't get a call. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, hey. one thing I forgot. Can I mention? Yeah, I'll do my commercial. Anytime you tell me, I can. Okay, right after this. <laughs> um, you have to... If you're wanting to take this class, you have to have it completed by uh, July 
first of 2018. So they're giving you a full year okay. uh, to to reach this aqu- requirement. So okay. I've, I wanted to mention that before I forgot. All right. We'll be back with more of Kilton Hatch in just a moment. Calls are welcome. Make Kilton feel like he really is necessary. Don't forget Lee's Furniture Floors and more with a no-tax plan. Great big, huge sale, no down, no interest on 12 months on approved credit. Call her. I'll be right there, I promise. Stand by. Don't forget they're having great, great sales on Beauty Rest Closeout Mattresses. And listen to this. They've got the bedroom sets and the living room sets on sale. Oh, beautify your home. These are fantastic. And what a selection of recl- Oops, excuse me, recliners, as I almost choked to death. And they've got the lift recliners also. All of this and more at your furniture store. Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland and Burley, 878-2341. I mean, get in the car, get in the pickup, get over there. All the carpet buys, everything at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Caller, go ahead, please. You're on the air. Yeah, I was just curious about the... Refuge from Minidoka Dam to Milner or Goose Hunting. They were doing a survey on whether they were going to change that or not. Um, yeah, we went down there, and the lion's share of the people that participated in that did not want to see any change. And so there currently is no changes proposed for this coming season. Perfect. Sounds good. That, that's a resting place for the geese, and if they open that up, they the geese around this area wouldn't have anywhere to land and Okay, thanks. Thank you for your call, caller. We appreciate it. Uh, you know what? Rather than get into another subject, I think we're going to send this back over to our main studio. See, that gentleman right there saved Kelton's life. Kelton was just about to close his eyes and sag off the chair. And uh, we appreciate that. We're going to take a little break for a couple of minutes, and we'll be back with more of the Idaho Fishing Game Report for the month of April with Kelton Hatch in just a moment. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll-free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Beth. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And here we are with our monthly Idaho Fishing Game Report and the original, not the fake Hollywood, but the original Kelton Hatch That's right me. here. Jeremiah Johnson. Uh, let's see. Sage Grouse Counts. Yep. So you were out at the Lex. Watching them dance. Watching them dance. Counting them. Everything looked well in Sage Grouse land. You know, it's really hit and miss this year. A lot of the Lex that I've been uh, counting for the last several years um, are actually down a little bit over the last couple of years. And Why? So Why? It, uh, probably not as good a hatch as we thought we had last year because when we went... what. There's a lot of things that we do. This lek count is one of them. We go out, we're doing about 500 leks in the Magic Valley. We go out and uh, check them, count the number of uh, males attending. Um, then we do another deal later on. We have a one-week hunting season, and a lot of people say, well, if they're, we're concerned about them, why are you hunting them at all? Well, it keeps people vested in them. we still got a strong population. It's just less than we used to have. And so, um, I mean, it, it's still on a downward trend. When you look at the overall trend, we have really good peaks like we did a couple of years ago, and then it drops off again, and usually the, the peaks aren't quite as high as the peaks were when they, you know, 30 years ago when we first started this. Um, but when we went through the wing bee, we take all the wings from the hunting season. It's called a wing bee. I don't know why. I guess it's oh, like a quill bee. Why did bee. you stop my question? I'll say because it anyway. I knew, what uh, is a wing, wing bee? bee? I know. Because <laughs> I knew. When I, I can, I can, I've seen your face enough that when you get a curiosity, I know there's a question coming. So. Why is there air? Well, I know that. It's to blow like, up basketballs balls, with. That's it right there. Um, kind of like when my wife, I say something and my wife gives me that look and I have to explain myself a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, but the wing bee is where we take all the wings from all those wing barrels. The, up in the hills, you'll see these wing barrels. Yeah. And so when you shoot a sage grouse or a rough grouse, chuckers, they throw their wings in there. Yeah. And most of ours are set up just during the sage grouse season. We take those wings, and by looking at the feathers on it, we can tell the age and the sex of the bird. You can. You can. You're a genius. Well, 
the guy that shows me how to every year <laughs> and re-explains it. Um, so is, you is, cut is, off both wings? You cut off one wing. One and we wing. just need one wing, and we can pull it out um, and, and look at the feather structure and uh, you can tell the coloration, and they can tell whether it's a juvenile, an adult female. Um, what do they pay this it's, guy? <laughs> not enough. Okay. Not enough. But um, we take all those wings and look at that. If it's been a good hatch year... Um, we've had a, a, a good, you know, birds meet, making it to maturity. We'll have three, two to three juveniles to every adult. Really? Um, meaning that we just had a lot of young out there. What's the most wings you've ever had in a barrel? Uh, we have, we probably have a thousand plus. You that, mean that guy sits there and goes through well, every we, single wing? We we bring a bunch of people in, and there's there's several thousand we actually do between wow. sharp tail and sage grouse, and uh, we'll have thirty people there. He just gives us a, a refresher, or she. Oh, so you do it too? I do. Yeah. We'll sit there, and then if you have any questions, to make sure whether it's a male or female. So what you, do you look for? Tell me. Um, how sharp the tips of the feathers are, whether they've uh, gone through a molt. Um, if they're rounded um, on the end, means they've drug on the in the sagebrush and it's rounded the end of them. What does that mean? Um, that they're older because young birds haven't gone through that a molt. So an before. old bird drags his wings. Well, they've drug them longer. All of them drag their wings. Uh, kind of like you knuckle dragging when you came exactly. in. Exactly, and so and then also the coloration of the feather. Um, if it looks like the tip of the feather has been dipped in as a kind of a paintbrush end because it's yeah. just got white on the end of yeah. it, um, that is a male, I'm re- thinking. The other one's different because it looks like it's just you put paint on the end of the finger and he- uh, feather and held it up, and it ran down, and that's a female. And it's just, it's really interesting. You're pretty because, smart. Well, and I'm about 50% right thinking i'm right on that it may be exactly the opposite way that's why it's good to have uh um it's been a while since we do it and we do it for the one day but really? the nice thing is we've got two or three people in there that that's their full job and so if you got a question on it you can go there's up there's a lot of things behind the scenes with the auto fishing game that people don't realize there is. There's you have these a, guys that look like college professors with horned rim glasses <laughs> looking at 3,000 bird wings. Or, or more, yeah, yeah. Going through and determining how many of them are adult, how many of them are juvenile. Or male or female. Or male or female. And it also shows us where harvest was better, where hatching success was better. Um, you know, right now we've got a couple programs going with ro- uh, ro- uh Grazing rotation. You want to try that again? Ruh, 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 ruh. Grazing rotation, rotate it, rotate it, rotating graze. Boy, <laughs> I'm a having, a, I'm struggling. Grazing ugly. rotation. You know, jump in anytime you want to put another nickel in. We'll see if we can't get <laughs> okay, you to run longer. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Well, we're doing this out at China Creek, and so we've we've uh, okay put hot wire around several pastures that we grazed that were grazed last year by the cattlemen out there and now we're coming in and we're keeping the cattle out of those areas we're working closely with them just to see um it is interesting to see uh bug production yeah in those rested pastures and the grazed pastures and it's given us better science to understand the best way to be able to manage uh AUMs for or survival of sage grouse. Actually, it's looking like uh, some of the g- good grazing practices can actually really help sage grouse. Good, I hope so. And it's um, just depending on how we do it, and it's uh, it's not limiting the number of cattle on the range at all. Okay, I got to do some bills here. Don't let your machine sit there idle while you're waiting for a part to come in. Go to Kelly's Bearing Supply. They keep everything on hand so you don't have to waste your time and money. They've got all the bearings, the chains, the brackets, everything. And they've got, of course, great help there, too. Zach and Brett, don't forget Alex. She's there, too. The bearing specialist. You'll know where you're at when you get your bearings at 
Kelly's, 1407 East Main Street in Burley. Also, real quick, don't forget our friends with Ramsey Heating and Electric and Linux. Oh, my, yes, it's springtime, and they're offering up to, up to $1,700 rebate on a qualifying new Linux home system that can keep your home feeling perfect inside no matter what's happening outside with the weather. You call and get more information. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Linux at 678 Five, nine. Okay, uh, we got to move right along here. We're running out of time. Fee, this is a long one, and I'm not sure I understand it all. Fee increase, HB 230, House Bill 230, combines price lock and depredation management slash access fee. fee. Meaning that they combined them and they went through. And so we will be having a fee increase for the coming year. Um, starting, let me think, um, December. This ought to take a while, I know, folks. good. Well, I'm, I feel like I'm in, in neutral about half the time today for yeah, some reason. That. <laughs> but, Motor's running, but nobody's at the steering wheel. <laughs> but um, coming December, when we start selling next year's licenses, yeah, we will have a 20% fee increase across the board unless you bought your hunting and fishing and deer tags this year. If you purchase them this year, you're in what we call fee lock, so you don't have to pay the 20% increase next year or for the next five years as long as you buy those tags and licenses every year. Every year. Do you have interpreters that work there? <laughs> you do. It, this, yeah, this is kind of a complicated one. Honestly, someone... don't you roll your eyes sometimes at trying to have to explain this stuff? Uh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> every time I look at our regulations, I roll my eyes because it's just like oh. they're, they're just getting so complicated. You know, I looked at the, the new big game reg, and it's just like, oh. I don't know that I have time to read this. So this let year. me put it in layman's terminology and tell me if I'm right. Okay? I thought that's what I just did. But I, 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 I know, but from my <laughs> yeah, standpoint. I, I, need, I need you to see if you, as if you a can consuming explain it, public, if you can explain If it. I bought a license last year. Or this year. I'm locked in for the next five years at that price if I buy a license every year. Correct. If I buy a new license, then, of course, I will have a 20% increase. Correct. So, like, if you didn't buy your deer and your elk tag this this year, next year... You'll have a twenty percent increase. So I'm I'm guessing you get a twenty percent increase right off the bat. See how you know really you ought to hire me to be your Interpreter. explainer, <laughs> my explainer, my yeah. explainer. But um, and so those that purchase every and it sounds really weird, but um, a lot of people are just like you, Zeb. They, I sorry, folks. No, <laughs> I, I fell one. right into that one. <laughs> no. Um, they forget to put in. Yeah. They forget to buy their license. Yep. Yep. And then it comes around. They go, oh, I went hunting last uh, Oh, I didn't go hunting last no, two year. Years ago. Two years ago. And so they're what we call churn. They churn in and out of the hunting population. Yep. Our goal is to recruit some of that churn to buy every year. So they save money and they, they, they willfully save money. will join every year. And they will fully join every year. People forget that we're a dedicated fund agency. If you care about wildlife in Idaho, the only way that wildlife receives, I mean, it's paid for by hunters and anglers. All wildlife management is paid for by hunters and anglers who purchase hunting and fishing licenses. Now, the second part of this bill, we you said uh, the depredation management and fee access yeah. or access fee. Access fee. What that is is everybody has to pay that. If you purchase it before the first of next month, you don't have to pay it this year. But it goes into effect effect May 1st. You're on your own. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what it is is it's a, the ax, it's a $5 fee, one-time yeah. fee. One-time fee. One-time fee. Okay. So if I buy a hunting license, I pay five extra dollars. That money is set aside to purchase access from landowners. Um, for, to hunt on private on their or access their private property, get to rivers or streams, or cut through their property or hunt their property, um, we have a lot of different uh, through the Access Yes program. We have a lot of different deals we strike up with landowners, and the other portion of that 
is used for depredation. So like if they have elk and deer and pronghorn uh, depredation on standing crops or stored crops, that money is also used to help pay bills for that. And we've got a, a high, uh, I mean a lot of our population is growing in these rural areas. Non-residents uh, are, get a $10 one-time fee and if you're older like yourself, disabled, you had or, to get it in, youth, didn't you? <laughs> or youth, it's only a $2 increase. Okay. All right. Now, i got to get a weather forecast here. And we've still got some more subjects to talk about this morning. Scarrows Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Oh, my goodness. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. They've got all the breakfast sausages, the bratwurst, the buckboard bacon, leaner and more economical than traditional bacon. And it comes in a whole bunch of different flavors, like ranch and peppered and lemon pepper. Oh, you're going to love it. 10 pounds for 30 bucks. You better get over there and check it out at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Here's Gina with the weather. Well, as we are saddling up and uh, getting ready to go for today, today's going to be nice, so you can expect to see some sunshine. going to be a little bit on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 9 miles an hour. Expect a high of 60, tonight low of 43. Wouldn't you know, tomorrow's going to be complete opposite. It's going to be windy out of the southwest, right around 24 miles an hour. 80% chance of rain showers for tomorrow as well. Most of the cloudy skies, high of 53, overnight low of 34. For Friday, winds calming down. Sun is going to shine, high of 57, overnight low of 35. Partly cloudy skies and 66 for Saturday and partly cloudy and 65 for Sunday. That is your weather for Zeta Duran. All right, Gina, thank you. And brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Go to their website, www.scarrowmeats.com, changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Let's go fishing. Yeah, well, Gina's... Uh weather report just made me real excited because I've got my first group of 130 kids we're taking fishing tomorrow. Tomorrow. From Gooding. Yeah. Tomorrow. And 30 mile an hour winds and 70% chance of rain. So, yeah! Yeah, have a good time, buddy. We're yeah. the plastic. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, well, it. how is fishing? Uh, you know, right now the lakes are doing really well. Yeah. Uh, this They're high, aren't they? The, you know, everything's high. Yeah, really? Everything's high. And you think the lakes are high, go try to throw a hook in the river because you'll you'll be stripped to your, you know, it'll just tear all your line out of your reel because the water is boiling out of all these mountains. And these I streams. can't even imagine. So really the fishing isn't that good right in now? In lakes it is really In good lakes right it is. It is. It, you know, Walcott's starting to pick up right now. Uh, Salmon Dam's been picking up. Um, we usually have some of our best rainbow trout fishing early in the spring. Yeah. And so these lakes that are known for rainbow are doing really well, except Mormon. And we had that uh, winter kill up on Mormon, and so we'll be restocking that lake. Okay. We have a caller with a question. Go ahead, please. You're on the air. Yeah, hi. I bought my uh, hunting and fishing license back in January. Now, what about this $5 trespass fee increase? Do I have to pay that? You you will not because you've got you bought it for this year and so you're good. It's just if uh, if you're buying somebody else's, you need to have it bought before the first of next month. And then the, when you buy one in January this year or buy it in December, you will be assessed that for the next year. But for this year, you're good to go. Uh, so I don't have to pay anything for this year, but next year I'll have to pay the trespass fee. Well, it's a, it's actually an, ac- it's yeah, it's an access depredation management uh, uh, fee is what it is, and so hopefully that's what we uh, lottery all those uh, super tags and stuff off for is for purchasing access. And in the Magic Valley, we spend about three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand a year on purchasing access yes property for people to be able to hunt and fish on private lands. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, sir. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. No, in all, uh, do you expect things are going to calm down before too long so they can start some river fishing? I mean, I know the water is really boiling. I, you know, I, right now, I would be surprised if it's calmed down by June. June. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and there's going to be certain areas that won't be calmed down till July. But you're right. I mean, you throw something in the river right now, don't expect it to come reeling back to you. <laughs> no, and if you catch your fish you might never you have to run him down 
Yeah. <laughs> because uh, he'll be, have so much drag on him from the current that you won't be able to get, get him in. And so. but he might have been a five-pounder when you hooked him. By the time you get him in fighting the current, he'll be about six ounces. Yeah. And so uh, well, All I can tell you is if you threw a rubber raft in here at Murtaugh, ooh, you could keep up with the fish. No kidding. That's boiling down oh, through there. My. Hey, now, I want you to articulate. Hey, articulate, 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 articulate on this. But what about shed hunting? A lot of people don't. Do you know what shed hunting is? Yeah, Ed? you're going after horns. You're going after horns. This has been a real struggle this year. You didn't year. think I'd know that? Yeah, they shed you their looked antlers. looked at me like that. <laughs> then you're going, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, deer and elk and moose. They yep. shed their antlers every year, yep. um, and we've got a lot of people that are interested in finding it. Uh, because of that interest, we've really had some issues this last year. Why? Uh, well, it's worth some money, and it's being really uh, social network driven in a lot of ways. People are taking pictures of their piles of antlers, and other people are getting jealous. And yeah, I, I, it's legal though, isn't it? It is, but we're just getting some really poor behavior. People chasing animals on snow machines and ATVs, and they see a bull that's only got one antler on. And uh, they may chase it, hoping the other one will bounce off. Or, um, you oh, know, God. and I've heard of in the past where people are chasing deer, um, trying to knock antlers off. Um, and so, and then now BLM has started a new rule this uh, last year that you cannot drive on BLM land unless it's on an established road or trail. And so we've got a lot of people that grid pattern a lot of this BLM on motorcycles or ATVs and just drive every 10, 12, 20 yards apart, and they'll grid an entire field looking for antlers and stuff like that. And we've had uh, this last week, I had six, we had six guys up in Buckhorn just down the road yeah. that were off trail on ATVs driving all over the place on one of our, our fresh seedings that we had up in there. Mm, not so, good. Not it, good. You know, and I understand people wanting to get out and look for sheds and stuff like that, but you really have to be – it's just that thing. You're living with other people, and it's – you, you just have to be a good neighbor. Yeah, but and, it's kind of selfish in its nature in itself because you're thinking of only you. You're not thinking about the environment. You're not thinking about the animal. You're not thinking about others. Yeah. It's well, pretty selfish. Well, we had a lot of issues. Uh, a lot of other states have put in shed hunting uh, seasons where you cannot start. Is there a license fee or something? Well, there's some people that want a license for it. I see. They would like us to put in how a are you gonna? How are you going to legislate that? A, that's the problem. Legislating ethics and morality is impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. And so, you know, we didn't put a uh, shed hunting season in place. Utah did, and they cited several people thousand dollars for Whoa. early shed hunting and stuff like that. Um, if things don't, if we don't see a market change in the next few years, I really think we'll end up seeing something like that going into effect. And so, I'm just trying to get that word out that you know, kind of manage yourself. Um, and think of others and private yeah. property rights. And, I mean, we have a lot of that issue over in eastern Idaho because a lot of the winter range is on private property, and so we've got trespassing issues. And um, it's just. It, well, and the problem is, is people get so excited because deer shed early. Yeah. Uh, de- January, we'll have deer dropping, so the animals are really stressed. And we would have, you know, 50 v- vehicles out in the Bennett's chasing deer around trying to get. And they weren't chasing the deer. They were just out walking or riding through the sagebrush trying to find sheds. But it was really pushing those deer on their winter uh, reserves. And so uh, just want people to be aware of that and uh, go out and have some fun. But have some respect for the animals and other people. There you go. Well said. Hey, Big Spring Tire Sale at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Doing the right thing matters. Absolutely. And boy, oh boy, have they got all the tires, all the different tread designs, all the sizes for your cars, pickups, SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers, all there at all seven locations, along with the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. Oh, my goodness, safe driving headquarters right there with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. Nobody does it better than your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop 
been and see them today. Big spring tire sale. We did it. We're done. We got through a lot of stuff. Holy smokes, yes, and it was double space, capital letters. Woo! You did a good job. Well, good. Who yeah. typed it for you? Huh? My wife. I thought so. <laughs> anyway, uh, next month, can you believe it? It's going to be May already. It just... I don't when know. you get older, it goes faster. It does. And when you're in, in elementary school, it's like, good heavens, school's never going to get out. Yeah. But now yeah. I'm old, it's like, I, it, it, yeah. What are you going to do this summer? Anything special? I got 30 seconds. Any special well, trips? My, my daughter's getting married. Your daughter's getting married? To a, uh, a young man from over in the uh, uh, Raft River area. Really? Well, congratulations. So I'm pretty excited. Boy, it's hard to imagine you in a tuxedo. It won't be happening. Oh. <laughs> it won't be happening. She actually says, well, you guys could probably wear a tie, but... You really don't even need to wear a suit. And I'm saying, really? you know, well, you know, that's... Love your daughter, huh? You bet. <laughs> okay. Sweetheart. <laughs> hey, don't forget, everybody, tomorrow's Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 1130. Our thanks to Kelton Hatch, good, good friend with the Idaho Fishing Game, another real good, informative program. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 806, and we'll saddle the horse for three hours and ride right here on Zebeth Ranch. And remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be. See you tomorrow tomorrow morning.